Hi there. Moving on with Lego to look at Lego Spybotics. Lego Spybotics around 2002, so that makes it about 20 years old. I bought this particular version on the internet for £20, including postage. May have been a bit over the top, uh, but it seems okay. It came with all the bits and gizmos and things. And what I really wanted for it was a programming cable. So this is the programming cable that enables this gizmo to be programmed from a computer. It happens to have what is called an RS-232 connector on it. But most computers don't have those these days. So what we could use, but I haven't tried, is a USB to RS-232 cable, which are readily available. But I happen to have RS-232 on my computer, and therefore I can control this directly, not using the original software, but using BrickX and not quite C as a programming language. Did a video on those, so... Hopefully, uh, I don't need to go on about that. This then actually plugs into the back of the vehicle. So if I take, well, I won't bother taking those off. I'll look at this one, which is a brick I bought on its own. Seem to be a lot of these on the internet uh, for sale, but not many seem to get sold. They seem to be too expensive. And on their own, hmm, I don't know too much what people would do with them. You can also get a controller for it. So this is the controller. And if we want to use this as a standalone device, then we can hopefully switch it on. And it comes on, gives me little flashing lights. If I press the forward that way, it goes that way, backward that way, backward that way, and forward that way. So each motor's controlled uh, left and right, forward, back, forward, back. This particular gizmo doesn't work unless we put it on a program. And to program it, we press the little grey button. This is a nightmare because as soon as it's in program mode, it starts whizzing backwards and forwards, but if I press the button, not easy to see. Uh, but the light can see it there, but can't see it up here, presumably because there's too much light to see it with. So let's stop it, making its din, and have a look at the front of this, which I find most peculiar. It has a button on the front, and that hits against the button, but it doesn't actually do anything with these claws, which seems a bit pointless. Whether it's built wrong or not, I don't understand. However, that then is one of the four spybotic programs. There's four of them which have different bits of Lego that come with them. So you can build different models. They're supposed to be able to do operations. In other words, you set up a sort of course, set the thing going and try to get to the light. So it must be possible somehow to program these to go towards a light. At least I think it must, but I haven't worked it out yet. So what about the programming lead? Well, if we go back to the old, uh, what is it, RCX brick, it used this way of programming the brick. Uh, this also is RS-232, but it uses a battery to get the power to be able to transmit from this tower to the R RCX brick. Uh, if when it transmitted it had a lead and you just had an RS-232 lead 
but it was peculiarly wired in as much as pin 7 wired to pin 8 and pin 7 on this one then to pin 8 on this and the RX on this one to TX on that and RX on that to TX on that. DTR went straight through as indeed did the note volts. So that was an interesting sideline to look at that particular cable. The cable then for this is uh, RS232 and at this end we have two uh, what look like LEDs. One's a photo transistor, the other is an LED and this triangular piece. That presumably is so that it will only go one way up into the device at the back so it must be the correct way around so that this one must be a photo detector a photo transistor and this one or a photo diode but I suspect photo transistor and this one just a normal LED which can transmit into the photo diode or photo transistor inside the brick so how indeed does this work? Well, if we look inside, we find it has a simple, not simple, it has a one-sided circuit board. And if I take it out and look at the other side, no tracks on it, just the two opto devices with four wires coming from the RS-232 connector. I wanted to build one of these, don't know why, just thought it would be a good idea. So I looked at the circuit for it and found, found what, well let's have a look at the circuit. I found this was the, the circuit, basically two different circuits, one for the photo transistor uh, and one for the LED. The photo transistor isn't too complex, it has a resistor, then the photo transistor and another resistor down at the bottom, and this part here goes off to the RX on the RS232. Got to remember that photo transistors go the wrong way round as it appears, uh, and therefore we've got to be careful which way around we put it. The other circuit then uh, has an input from TX that goes through this resistor R2, then comes up to this diode here. I assume this is here just to help the positive supply. And that then goes into these two transistors. I've just used simple BC547, something like that. And these two together then form as a constant current device so that this LED doesn't depend upon the voltage it just depends upon the current and that current is measured by this resistor here which is R3. If we assume that this transistor comes on at about 0.68 volts anywhere between 0.6 and 0.7 then we can calculate the current by this resistor as they've used a 68 ohm resistor then the current is going to be voltage divided by resistance if we measure the voltage in millivolts and the resistance in ohms then our answer comes out in milliamps so it works out if I've got it right that this LED is just going to pass 10 milliamps a nice safe voltage for a nice safe current for it to get the power then, rather than having the battery like in the RCX module, this then uses the DTR line as positive and the RTS line as 0 volts. This happens to have a diode in it so it can't be plugged the wrong way around. I assume that that's what that does. So if I want to build this, how do I build it? Well, gone on to my old favourite Veriboard. Just use five strips, or should I say strip board. Use five strips of it with the... So this resistor here comes to this track and that then the photo transistor across there 
and then comes back again to this resistor to pull it down. The TX then comes into this input resistor here. That then goes to the diode which connects to the positive rail there, D3. And that comes in to the collector of Q4 and the base of Q2. The collector from Q2 goes up to positive through a di uh, yeah, an LED and comes down to ground through this resistor here which limits the current. The other transistor then is connected across it. I then need to connect this to the computer. To do that then I've cut a lead. I had an old RS232 lead. So I've taken that, cut it in the middle, using a multimeter, gone through each of the wires to work out which pin is which. And so I've come up with this connection here. Obviously this is just temporary and I put some hot glue over it to keep it permanent once I'm happy with it. So where are we? We've built this thing. If we have a look at the thing itself, a bit bumbly, but it seems to work. All I've done at the moment is just point the photo devices out and they then just push into the back of the brick. Got to make sure I get it the right way around so that the this is the light coming out. So that's got to go into the photo detector and this is the LED coming out so that's got to go onto the detector on this side. This of course just plugs on, it's just convenient that I've used five uh, pins or a five connector and that just plugs onto there and that then just plugs into my computer and seems, well it's worked so far to actually program it. Why have I built it? Well, because I could, I suppose, because I wanted to see if I could. If we look a bit closer at it, it's uh, not very well built. I've built it all wrong. I should have had my pins on this end, I feel, with the positive at the top and the note bolts along the bottom. Putting it at this end got me all confused and it took quite a while to sort it out. I've used surface mounted resistors on the bottom where the tracks are close together. And this is a diode, a surface mounted diode to bridge across this track here and to there. And of course I've had to put holes in so that the tracks aren't connected to each other. Yeah, an interesting project, worked well, I'm happy with what I've managed to do so far. Uh, the photo, I put photo diode there, in fact it's a photo transistor, and the photo transistor I happen to have used, although I suspect a lot of different ones could have been used, it's an Osram SFH310, and that seems, that's worked for me. Where to go from here then? Well, the next sort of thing to do is to try and program this. My idea was to make battle bots that could shoot at each other and if hit would record a hit on the LEDs at the top. So maybe you'd start off with three LED light lit, three lives. And if you managed to shoot an opponent, you got an extra life. But if an opponent shot you, you lost the life. But, as I say, I can't work out how to get this to work. This uses a special language and it will transmit in that, although I suspect that this gizmo won't let much light out at the end and I would have to change it somehow. So this could fire out on one spy bot and this would receive on the other spy bot. Not too sure whether somebody's done this or not already. But it'll be interesting to have a look to see what I can actually do. There's one interesting thing I think I found when I switch this on, and that is perhaps not. OK. 
can't see it. Oh, maybe I can just see it there inside. I'm not. Looks like there we've got a. The camera's picking up an infrared transmission. So who it's transmitting to, I have no idea. Or maybe it's transmitting to the transmitter, to the correct controller. Anyway, yeah, very interesting to go through. Nice little project. Enjoyed doing it. And have now a spare lead uh, for if this one actually goes down. If the commercial one, I don't suspect it will. But at least I've got a spare now. So I think that's it. I think I've gone through all about building the computer Spybots connector. So it's bye now. Bye.